Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Katoulis and I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research at the University of Tasmania. Uh, I'll be your MC today. I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we all gather today online and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Many of us are meeting across Lutarita, Tasmania, Aboriginal land, sea and waterways. I acknowledge with deep respect the traditional owners of Lutruita, the Palawa people. The Palawa people belong to the oldest continuing culture in the world. They cared and protected country for thousands of years. They knew this land, they lived on the land and they died on these lands. I honour them. I pay my respects to the many Aboriginal people that did not make elder status and to the, to the Tasmanian community that continued to care for country. I recognise a history of truth which acknowledges the impacts of invasion and colonisation upon Aboriginal people resulting in the forcible removal from their lands. I acknowledge our First Nations people did not cede sovereignty. I acknowledge the need for Makarata. Our island, Luchawita, is deeply unique with spectacular landscapes with our cities and towns surrounded by bushland, wilderness, mountain ranges and beaches. I stand for a future that profoundly respects and acknowledges Aboriginal perspectives, culture, language and history, and a continuing effort to fight for Aboriginal justice and rights paving the way for a strong future. I'm so, I am excited to welcome you here today and thank you for your attendance to celebrate and officially launch the Tasmanian Industry 4.0 Test Lab Integrity of Food. Spe specifically, I welcome and acknowledge the Honourable Joe Palmer, MLC, Member for Rose Vies, the Honourable Rob Valentide, MLC, Member for Hobart, Mr John Tucker, MP, Member for Lyons, uh, the following presenters, Professor Rufus Black, Professor Alexander Subic, uh, Jeff Connolly, Associate Professor Stephen Cahoon, Dr. Fiona Kerslake, and Sarah Nollett. I also welcome and acknowledge the Test Lab External Advisory Group members. We have an extremely tight schedule today, so I'll, I'll aim to keep the introductions brief. I welcome our first pre presenter, Professor Alexander Zubik. Professor Zubik is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Science, Engineering and Health and Vice President, Digital Innovation at RMIT University. Professor Zubik is currently leading the national network of Industry 4.0 Test Labs and the Committee for Future of Work, Education and Training under the auspice of the Australian Industry Group. Uh, Alexandra. Thank you, Kutz. Um, uh, very much appreciated and good morning, everyone. Uh, the adoption and deployment of Industry 4.0 within uh, Australia has the potential to significantly improve the competitiveness of our small to medium enterprises in particular, and the broader and broadly advance our manufacturing sector across Australia, including food manufacturing and food production, which is a key focus today. In 2016, the Prime Minister's Industry 4.0 Task Force was announced uh, with the support of the Australian government. The task force's initial role was to connect Australian and German industry uh, with leaders to collaborate and share information on Industry 4.0. As a member of this task force and leading the Industry 4.0 Test Labs work stream at the time, I had the privilege to discover how important it is to establish innovative learning facilities to help Industry 4.0 transformations by, by nurturing and facilitating collaboration of all stakeholders. This experience has motivated us to develop our own test lab strategy and framework for Australia in support of our digitalization journey. At this stage, we have established six Industry 4.0 test labs in Australia as part of our strategy. These test, test labs aim to support and enable the research and education sector to work closely with the industry sector, in particular SMEs, in order to progress the Industry 4.0 transformations. They provide collaborative environments that act as co-creation spaces for, for our collective learning by doing. 
The stakeholders engage with the network, develop capabilities that enable them to drive the adoption and deployment of Industry 4.0 technologies and practices. And in, in a way also uh, coupled with, with the workforce development and workforce transformation efforts of, of broader industries at scale and at pace. Test labs are typically focused on different industry priority areas, whereby together they represent a strategic interconnected portfolio of capabilities of national significance, engaging actively a wide range of industry segments that are of strategic importance nationally. The University of Tasmania Industry 4.0 Test Lab is unique compared to test labs in our other states, as it focuses on food integrity. It has a distributed approach across the Tasmanian food production ecosystem, as opposed to being established as a single contained facility. And this innovation indeed is made possible by Industry 4.0 technologies and represents an important milestone in our portfolio development that provides also a reference point for learning as indeed every test lab does in their own unique way. I congratulate our colleagues at the University of Tasmania on reaching this important milestone and playing such an important role within our National Industry 4.0 Test Labs network. I also wish you much success as you engage with and support SMEs in Tasmania on their digital transformation journey. Thank you, Kutz. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, our next presenter is Jeff Connolly. Jeff is Chairman and CEO of Siemens Australia and the Pacific Region, an official partner in the federal government's Industry 4.0 Test Lab pilot project. Jeff has been instrumental in driving Industry 4.0 in Australia, including the chairman, including chairing the Prime Minister's Industry 4.0 Task Force. Jeff. Thanks so uh, very much. And, and good morning to everybody who's dialed in for this important event. Uh, I'm very honoured to be part of the, today's proceedings. Uh, the opening of University of Tasmania's uh, Industry 4.0 Test Lab focused on the integrity of food. Um, it is a significant milestone, I think, for U University of Tasmania, but also uh, another milestone for Australia. Um, as an integrated part of the a strategic national network that Alex Subic just uh, referred to. Um, this is one of the key outcomes of the of the Prime Minister's Industry 4.0 Task Force. Um, we set out, and, and I would acknowledge Alex Subic at this point in time. We set out at that time to build national capability, and that's national capability in with the mind the, uh, the future of work, the fourth industrial revolution, um, but actually trying to uh, move the needle, if you like. Uh, on education outcomes, uh, research infrastructure in the country, but also getting an amount of uh, um, uh, direction from a number of uh, pilot universities and, and University of Tasmania stood up and, and actually requested to be a, a central part of that and, and have done so um, very, very well. Um, I would also at this point just acknowledge the traditional owners uh, of the lands that we all meet on. Um, virtually and, and in situ, the Wurundjeri people here in, in Bayswater in Victoria, where I'm sitting at the moment, pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, they have been and continue to be the most important keepers of the memories and traditions of the lands that we share and build on. I'd acknowledge Rufus Black, uh, Vice Chancellor and President of the University of Tasmania. Uh, I've got to know Rufus over a period of time and, and I, I absolutely respect him for his vision, the leadership he's showing in University of Tasmania. This particular topic is just one of them and the reputation that he's earned amongst his peers at universities all across Australia. I'd acknowledge Alex Subic. Um, without, without him, we wouldn't have had uh, the work stream, uh, future of work and test labs. Alex has driven that with passion. Uh, and I would actually add on, um, without Andrew Tan Chan and Stephen Cahoon, we wouldn't be sitting here today um, talking about a finished, uh, let me say, a finished starting point is probably the best way to express uh, where we're up to in this particular test lab. I say only a, a couple of words about the Prime Minister's Task Force Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is not just about technology, it is about an holistic framework to move society from where it is today to where it obviously will need to be. 
And the key part from the university's perspective, of course, is to have the outcomes both in education and in research that support what is inevitable in, in the cyber physical world described in Industry 4.0. Uh, Industry 4.0 is about developing the standards in the country, making sure we have the research capability, making sure that the, the network security, uh, the cyber security is in place, make sure the legal models are in place. Uh, and of course, that uh, we have the right skills capability in the nation. Uh, the work that we put together as the task force, um, uh, I was lucky enough to be working for an organisation that had the capacity to make some software grants to the six key universities as, as really the a core piece uh, for the universities to build on uh, in the chosen field, uh, and in this case, University of Tasmania, the integrity of uh, integrity of food. So the test labs themselves are about um, the touching and feeling what it really is to be working in uh, the cyber physical world. Um, hopefully, we we see education using that same infrastructure. Hopefully, we see industry coming in and out of that infrastructure, and again understanding firsthand, uh, learning by doing uh, what we're talking about. We talk about uh, the environment, the jobs of the future. So uh, it's it's uh, been a, a journey, I would say. Uh, I would say um, University of Tasmania has chosen a very, very important part of, of uh, Australia's needed uh, capabilities in the, in the coming years. Uh, and universities also, uh, University of Tasmania is also already outstanding in a number of areas, particularly in, in the area of uh, Southern Ocean Research, for example. So uh, I would like to uh, commend University of Tasmania on what they've achieved so far, and I look forward to seeing all sorts of achievements uh, in the area of agribusiness as, as we move forward. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks for acknowledging our colleagues. And I also acknowledge you as an important member of that team. It does take a team. Uh, integration is an important aspect, and I think we're talking a lot about that today. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I now welcome Associate Professor Stephen Cahoon. Uh, Stephen is the Director of Sense-T at the University of Tasmania. Stephen is the academic lead for the university's Industry 4.0 Test Lab Integrity of Food, which we are launching today. And Jeff, as you rightly said, food is critical to our survival. So thank you for that. So Stephen, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Coots. Although today signals the launch of the test lab, a dedicated team at the university in conjunction with our, our industry panel have been working on the test lab since 2019, when Professor Andrew Chan and Moya Fife uh, first put together the application. Since then, we've had uh, university researchers from engineering, ICT, SENSE-T, uh, Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, the University College, Social Sciences, IMAS, and also our professional staff, all working together with our industry panel that also represents various industry associations, TAFE, government, and small to medium enterprises. So it's a very, very large team of people that have, that have, that have come together in their belief of what this test lab can do for our state of Tasmania. The purpose of, the, of our test lab, and this is using the words from our industry panel, was to de-risk and demystify what is industry for and how that could be applied to SMEs and importantly, how it can provide value and benefits to them. Another part of it was to showcase the industry for technologies and approaches and provide essentially a sandpit where they could all work together with the researchers in a risk-free environment using this cutting edge equipment and trial it in most cases on their premises. Because I think that's a really big important part of what we offer is that portable equipment uh, that can be brought out to them for, them for them to trial. And just in terms of the, of the equipment, what we adopted was in the, in the spirit of this industry four was a supply chain approach to the equipment. Now, the equipment can be used almost as a silo or it can be used right the way across the full supply chain. And very shortly, you'll be hearing from Dr. Fiona Kurzlake about one of our projects, the Raspberry Project, which did adopt a supply chain approach. But with our equipment, we have equipment that works on farm. Uh, we have six mobile sensor and technology units that, can, that are able to go out on farm and one's already out at the Raspberry Farm. Uh, that has about 70 to 80 sensors on board. 
We also, through our partnership with the Cromarty, a, a local small to medium enterprise, uh, they've developed uh, equipment to monitor, to monitor and help to optimise equipment on farm. And even in transit, we have sensing. So we have sensing the environment on farm, but we also have sensing the environment throughout that whole supply chain using gas analyzers and a variety of sensors. And then at the other end of the supply chain, we have a whole range of other equipment that will help us to monitor the quality and the authenticity of our, of our food and beverage products. We have a pathogen tester, which is also has a portable nature to it to ensure the quality. We have electronic tongues and electronic tasters to make sure that the, the taste has been replicated from one year to one year to the next. We have a BEV scan that uh, that can help us to prove the authenticity of, of our beverages. Even from an education perspective, we have six farm bots that will be going out around schools here in Tasmania so they, they can enjoy and understand that, that nexus of what brings together the robotics and the IoT and industry for. And a very important piece of what we do in terms of education is with our tier smart farms. So the tier smart farms will be a live implementation of industry four approaches and technologies on the farms in Northern Tasmania. This at our Elliott and Forthside farms. So really what it is, it's an industry four case study in action. Our industry partners, uh, Farm Pulse, uh, who, are, who are helping to guide this project are being supported by two other SMEs, Definium Technologies and AgLogic. And what they're doing is implementing the whole range of sensing capabilities, including irrigation management, water tank and dam, dam levels, pump pressures, uh, even animal product, uh, sorry, animal production monitoring and so on. So what this supply chain demonstration project will, uh, sorry, what that particular project will do, will help to see have farmers and growers come to the farm and see that happening across all the different stages. Now, in terms of next steps, well, as mentioned, today signals the beginning of the test lab. However, we've already undertaken projects and activities with companies such as Siemens, Cromarty, Bitwise, Nucon, Ferment Taz, Definium Technologies, AgLogic, and Farm Pulse, and also the Christmas Hills Raspberry Farm. So we've already been very, very active. We've already provided demonstrations at the TAPG Expo and at AgFest, and will again be at AgFest this year. So we'll continue working with our industry panel we'll, who will help us to, to identify the right places and the right people to identify, uh, to undertake these further trials and demonstrations of the equipment so that we can make a difference here in Tasmania. And just in, in finishing, I'd really like to thank my research colleagues for their impressive work they've done so far in pulling together all this different range of equipment and making sure it's suitable and relevant to industry. Uh, our, our various marketing people and, and events teams who's helped to pull this here together. Our industry panel for their continuing guidance and assistance uh, the, with, with ensuring that we stay on course. Also to our, our Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Executive Dean of the College of Science and Engineering for their for their belief in this project and really getting back uh, and really putting their support behind it. And lastly, I'd like to identify my uh, acknowledge my two very close colleagues uh, in this work, both Sandra Knowles and Samantha Sawyer, who've really been leaving this on a day to day basis. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Goods. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you for acknowledging Sandra and Samantha. And Stephen, thank you for your leadership as well. Our next presenter is Dr. Fiona Kerslake. Dr. Kerslake is the Head of Horticulture at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture at the University of Tasmania. And, and she's developing a breadth of knowledge across annual and perennial horticultural crops. Fiona. Thanks, Coote. So I'm uh, actually on leave from that position at the moment and I'm currently in a role as Head of Agronomy with Bitwise Agronomy. So we're an ag tech startup based out of Launceston in the north of the state. And what we're doing is we're using um, uh, AI platform to uh, process videos which have been captured by GoPros. So one of the sectors that we've been working with is the really high growth berry industry. Uh, so there's a lot of expansion in this industry. And so there's a lot of demand there 
for accurate um, uh, raspberry flower counting, immature and mature fruit counts and things like that. Because what's key to this industry and what they've been telling us is that they need to hit the market at the right time with the right volume of fruit, but the integrity of that fruit also needs to be quite high as it uh, transits through the supply chain till it gets into your fridge and into your, um, you know, into your meals. So um, the opportunity arose for us to be able to collaborate with uh, the UTAS test lab, which was really great. So not only could we provide our, um, you know, our flower counts and fruit counts, et cetera, but we could also integrate that with other production metrics, which were available through use of some of the equipment, which Stephen has just outlined. So we have been able to further assist the, the raspberry grower to better understand things like the temperature and humidity dynamics within the tunnels. Then through a fruit sampling strategy, we've also been able to understand how this relates to the fruit quality including things like the flavour and aroma characteristics, which are critically important to the consumer. Uh, we've also been having a look at, you know, in relation to sort of sensing the, the uh, temperature and the humidity, how does this relate to the disease pressure and the incidence within those tunnels and sort of at different points along the tunnels? And this helps the grower to understand things like when should they be rolling up the sides of the tunnel and letting more air flow through, et cetera. So they found this really useful, but then also the interesting thing, which they've already been trying to optimise is their cold chain. So from the time of picking in the field, what's the temperature of that fruit as it's picked? How long does it take to chill it down? And then what is um, you know, the condition of the fruit as it goes through the distribution centre? So we've been collecting all that data with the test lab and then the opportunity to use the Siemens MindSphere platform uh, to integrate all that data means that our berry growers are then able to interrogate that to find out where their particular pain points are arising and then they can sort of see the overlay of all the other data, where are the impacts for them. So that's basically a short summary of the Raspberry Project. Thanks. Thanks very much, Fiona, and, and apologies for forgetting that. And I, I think it does show, highlight the importance of, you know, transitioning between university and, and industry. I think we're trying to break down those barriers. So wonderful presentation and the importance of people. Although we're talking about Industry 4.0, the people are with it. So thank you, Fiona, for that. Uh, I now invite Professor Rufus Black, uh, Vice Chancellor and President of the University of Tasmania to present. Rufus. Thank you very much, Coots uh, and colleagues. Wonderful to be joining uh, everyone today for the official uh, to officially launch Test Lab 4.0. This project is uh, not just important for us as a university, but it's really critical for Tasmania's future. And Fiona's kind of story of a few minutes ago helps us see just why. Agriculture will be an ever larger part of Tasmania's economic future, and that will be dependent on being able to occupy the premium shelves uh, of food stores around the world with products with high margins that have been of absolute quality um, that we've been able to produce productively, uh, productively here and get successfully to those markets um, all over the world. We know today that if we are to take advantage of Tasmania's extraordinary intrinsic advantages of uh, still having plenty of water, remarkable, remarkable soils, um, highly talented agricultural uh, producers uh, and food, uh, food processes. If we are to retain and grow that, it will require the kind of technology that Industry 4.0 is all about. That's what we will need in order to retain uh, the edge and indeed to, to grow this. And that, of course, is true across the country, which is why this is such a great test bed um, for the larger Australian enterprise of bringing this kind of technology um, into our whole food supply chain to ensure that Australia can have an ever larger share of the value created um, by, uh, by agriculture and to do it sustainably. Um, the great challenge is to be able to do this over the long run. And there's nothing like an island to put you to the test to say we have to produce not just great food productively, but sustainably on an island with 100% renewable energy, but actually also a limited base of soils, um, we have to be able to do this really well. And the technologies that have come together in industry four points in this whole uh, test labs project, um, I think are the gateway to that. So this really is mission critical for Tasmania's, uh, for Tasmania's uh, uh, future. And that's why for us, for our university, committed to Tasmania's future, but also to what we can share from here to the wider nation and the world, this project is just uh, so uh, important. 
in lots of ways, it's been a real benefit to have been had this uh, occur in a period of disruption because it's enabled us to actually be bolder. Um, to figure out how we get a deeper and broader reach uh, for this work. So the fact that we're doing things virtually means you don't have to take off, uh, you don't have to kind of get off your uh, muddy gumboots uh, and get changed to come into the space. The space, you can either visit it virtually or as we've seen, the space comes to you. Um, and I think that's really powerful because our challenge here is actually with a broad, um, small SME, a sector dominated by SMEs, we've actually got to be able to get this technology far and wide and used by businesses of such a range of scales, but most of them pretty small for whom these kind of technologies really have not been. They haven't had access to them and there's a lot of capability to be built uh, to be built around them. So disruption, I think, has been um, our friend uh, and that combination of the virtual and the mobile physical to be able to get this um, out there, I think is important. The other thing is that this develops industry in another way that I think is important. We think of some of our partners who are named in, in the course of the conversation today, like Definium. We don't just want to be a agricultural producer. We want to be ourselves a producer of the integrated technologies of 4.0. It's an important part of our future. The fact that we are selling highly bespoke, innovative sensing technologies um, in the sector around the world already out of some of the uh, still fairly early stage businesses here, I think tells us that there's a second industry that we're giving birth to here, which is the industry built on delivering 4.0 for agriculture uh, and food processing. And for Australia, there's at least as much value in that as in the industries that it serves. So we're really excited about that and very committed to backing it. And it's why when we see ourselves effectively being into to creating innovative product to make this happen, I think that sets us in the right, uh, absolutely in the right direction. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a generation's time, we're creating very substantial value compared to agriculture from the technologies to support agriculture. Um, and that I think is a uh, really critical to our own sense of uh, our own sense of possibility um, here. So this really, uh, this really uh, matters. Um, uh, for us in so many uh, in so many ways, and it will also help transform the university. Um, we need to continue to be more engaged with industry, more about transforming their capacity, um, and there's nothing like a really pointing vehicle like this to help with the challenge all Australian universities have of getting closer to industry, solving industry's problems faster, more dynamically, um, more rapidly, and with a greater sense of the shared value creation that we're all involved in. So this project um, is enormously important. I did, of course, want to thank people. I, uh, um, and it does start with Jeff. I knew Jeff long before I took this role and Jeff has been an inspiration. His sense of where Australian industry needed to go um, uh, has been a driving force in all sorts of people's conversations. And I know amongst my vice chancellor colleagues, but also uh, much more broadly across the innovation sector in Australia, Jeff is a benchmark. He has been a leader and a shaper of these conversations. Um, and so when, uh, when I was talking to Jeff and the opportunity to see this Siemens partnering in this project in agriculture, he came up, it was a chance to be connecting with a very powerful vision that Jeff and others have been driving. Of course, it, um, I want to acknowledge Alex's leadership. These things don't happen unless you get outstanding university leaders able at a national level to figure out how you take that kind of innovative energy um, that people like Jeff and Jeff particularly has created and turn it actually into a university program. So uh, Alex, we are very appreciative of what you've been doing to make it um, happen. But my own colleagues here are, are, have been, uh, have been uh, just uh, fantastic and extraordinary. Um, and I want to thank them uh, for it. Andrew Chan, of course, Stephen, um, who's been the lifeblood of this. Sandra's project manager um, uh, has been so important to hold the faith and particularly through the COVID period and find out ways um, in which we make that happen. I know they've had some very, very good support along the, uh, along the way from uh, some of their colleagues, but it's also been the champions like Fiona and others um, who've been ready to take the technology in our place, whether they're sitting on the industry side or on the university side um, and, drive that, uh, and drive that forward. So my thanks to all of them. 
And of course, the Commonwealth Government. The Commonwealth Government here, I think, is again making a very strategic and powerful investment in the transformation of Australian uh, Australian industry. And we wouldn't be here without their uh, their commitment um, either. And their, uh, I think, appropriate prioritisation of both Industry 4.0, but also of its transformative capability in agriculture. And our considerable thanks uh, to them for really making this possible and having the vision um, to bring it together in these kind of unique collaborative ways. So it's really my pleasure, therefore, to be officially launching um, in the Industry 4.0 Test Lab, uh, Integrity of Food uh, and Beyond, uh, and to the, uh, the, introduce you to the virtual headquarters um, for this project. And I think we now turn over to a taste of what we'll find there. So thank you, colleagues. Thanks, Rufus. Um, I now introduce um, Sarah Nollett. An internationally recognised food system. The University of Tasmania's industry. Are we, did we want to? Oh, let's go to the video and I'll come back after that. Three four test lab, focusing on the integrity of food. This is the lobby of our virtual showroom. Here, you can see examples of industry four technology in action across the entire value chain, from paddock to plate. This technology will become the driver for change and business transformation. Industry 4 is still a new term, which is why we have provided an easy to understand summary of what it is and why it's increasing in importance. Here, you can listen to experts and industry partners explain why Industry 4 is already revolutionising agriculture and food innovation. As you explore our virtual test lab, you'll see explanations of various pieces of Industry 4 equipment, as well as their uses and benefits to SMEs. You'll also find informative videos demonstrating the equipment in action and case studies of industry projects that are already underway. For more information on each room, simply click the Information tab, where you can find a summary of the contents and an explainer video. Each room represents one of the four major test beds for you to explore. This includes optimising food quality, real-time supply chain sensing, biosecurity and food safety, and industry four case studies. For example, in this room, you can find our current industry case studies, which demonstrate what industry four looks like in action. Here, we can explore the smart farm case study we're working very closely with a Tasmanian SME, Farm Pulse, who are applying their Industry 4 and Internet of Things expertise in collaboration with university agricultural scientists to convert a traditional farm to a smart farm. This transformation will provide a live example for other farmers. It will represent a step-by-step -step approach to Industry 4 adoption, showing the benefits and value of data-driven decision-making. As you work through our Industry 4 examples, you'll see how we collaborate with our industry partners to discover new solutions. Get in touch with us. Email testlab at utas.edu.au. We hope you'll share our excitement in what's possible for your business. Apologies uh, for that little glitch on my behalf. Uh, what a wonderful video. What a great, uh, what a great resource. So thanks everyone. Uh, and now, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Sarah Nollett, an internationally recognised food systems innovation expert, uh, the CEO and founder of Agthentic Advisory, a global food and agricultural strategy firm, and co-founder of Tenacious Ventures. Sarah will host an Ag Tech Showcase for us. So, Sarah, over to you. Fantastic. Thanks, Kutz. And hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me today. Uh, I want to share just briefly a little bit about us and then a few reflections on the ag tech ecosystem more broadly in Australia. And then we will move into the startup presentations. And hopefully we'll have a bit of time at the end for Q&A. So if you do have a question for any of the startups that we'll hear from, please use the Q&A function in the Zoom. 
Uh, so just briefly, who are we? Um, well, we've been lucky enough to help with the, the test lab uh, and some industry engagement strategies, but more broadly, we are the Agthentic Group, and we spend 100% of our time helping enable innovative agriculture for global impact. That means not only our advisory work, like here with the test lab and with many industry bodies, governments and private sector actors across agri-food tech in Australia and globally, but also Tenacious Ventures, our venture capital firm, the first and only specialized VC firm here in Australia dedicated only to agri-food tech. Uh, and we tell stories as well in all of that space uh, on our podcast and content platform, Ag Tech So What? Stories of non-traditional and traditional innovators uh, changing the global agriculture and food system, including some in Tasmania. A couple of reflections on the ecosystem. You might have noticed from my accent that I am not Australian. I'm American originally, I grew up in Silicon Valley, but I came to Australia just over five years ago. And what I noticed at that time was that Australia is fantastic at agriculture. We have incredibly innovative producers and world-class agricultural research and development. But just five years ago, we didn't have much in the way of this emerging industry 4.0. We didn't have an ecosystem to help commercialize some of these technologies and ensure that we have impact for the ag sector, as well as a commercial opportunity in our knowledge. And really fast forward, all that has changed in the last five years. It's been fantastic to see that we've started to build an ecosystem. We have dozens of accelerator and incubator programs and hubs and smart farms to connect producers with ag tech startups. And we're starting to produce dozens, if not hundreds of agri tech startups, some of which you'll hear from today. And all of this comes together to create two opportunities and, and Rufus called this out perfectly, I thought. One is technology that can help our farmers be more productive, more sustainable, capitalize on global trends and succeed in, a, in an increasingly uncertain future. But the other is a new innovation economy called Industry 4.0, or in this case, Ag Tech, where we can commercialize and export our knowledge, our technology products and services, and create a parallel economic opportunity that's not constrained by how much land we have or how much water we have, but instead is boundless. And that's what's so exciting about the test lab and the opportunity for Tasmania. But we do still have a long way to go. I would sum it up a little bit by this picture. If on the left side, we have what's technically possible, widgets we can build or foundational research we can do. And on the right side in the red, we have what's desirable, what solves a real problem. Ideally, we want all of our solutions to be in the middle of those two circles. Things that industry actually wants and will move the needle on the bottom line and things we can technically build. The challenge right now is we focus a little too much on what's achievable and not enough on what's desirable. And that's what's so exciting about projects like the test lab and opportunities for Tasmania at large to start shifting things, to engage more with growers and to be part of this ag tech opportunity for Australia more broadly and Tasmania specifically. So with that, I'm excited to not just talk about it, but show you how it's already happening with three Australian ag tech startups from all over, including in Tasmania, and really put them on the stage to uh, give you a taste of some of the innovations and technologies that are happening to move the needle for growers and create a unique and parallel innovation opportunity that creates jobs, that showcases our knowledge, and that leverages our strength in agriculture, but builds an entirely new opportunity for Tasmania and for Australia. So with that, I will turn it over to Hunter from Ripe Robotics. Uh, g'day. Thanks for that, Sarah. Great to, great to be here. Um, so at Ripe Robotics, we're working on uh, initially automating uh, fruit harvesting. Uh, we've sort of come at this from a, uh, like a, a, if we could achieve this, it would be uh, great. And now we're trying to actually make it, uh, make it work, which is... Uh, yeah, kind of where all the all the uh, all, all the risk is for us. So behind me, we've got uh, our our new version of our our, our fruit picking machine, um, and the goal here is to uh, basically have a machine that can that can pick fruit, but is upgradable as the technology uh, improves in the future. Um, could you jump to the next slide there? Oh, sorry, I don't know the deck there. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so we sort of when we we're looking at this uh, originally. Uh, we're sort of thinking there's lots of great work being done on uh, on data gathering and, and all these uh, different tasks happening separately, um, but it's it's trickier to to get the get growers to but use the uh, the new information that's coming out, and it, it might not be required in the long term for them to to do that. Uh, so it seems like the biggest uh, like the currently biggest 
hold up is, is, is on the labor side. So we're focusing on, on harvesting right now. But the idea of the, the machine that we're trying to build is that uh, it should be upgradable to do other tasks in the future. And in the long term, you can have all these uh, data inputs plugging into uh, directly into the machine and almost bypassing the, the farmer to some extent and uh, have it automatically make the, make the best decisions on where to, where to thin or where to harvest or how to, uh, uh, which fruit to pick and how to, how to classify it as, as it comes off the tree. Uh, and also make the predictions about okay, we pick this much. Uh, here's how much we expect uh, to come at the end of the end of the season, or to come in the next season. Um, so we've, for that, we've built our uh, this is our prototype, uh, Clive. Uh, basically, it sort of kind of works. You can put it next to a tree, and it assesses the fruit and tries to reach in to 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 pick it. Uh, it's pretty slow, and it, it broke down a lot. But it was kind of a proof of concept. Uh, that was enough to show it's possible to get this technology uh, working and to do it in a way where it can basically unbolt any piece of the equipment and bolt on different sensors and different end effectors uh, running off the same, uh, the same computer hardware uh, to do multiple things in the, in the long term. On the left there is the little, uh, the little unit that just drags it around the orchard uh, to go anywhere at once. Um, so the next step then was to build a unit that should be uh, Commercial that should be able to get to a sort of speed and reliability that would uh, that would basically make sense for people to to use. Um, if you want to jump on the on the next slide, there we sort of got a, a picture of what it was a few weeks ago at least. Um, so this is uh, this is Eve. Uh, it's basically the same as our earlier version. It has arms that can reach into the tree, and uh, we sort of found that we need to be able to reach in from any from any angle to be able to access, access all the fruit and all of the uh, twigs that we're, we're, we might, be, might, might need to prune. Uh, and also has little, uh, the wheels can sort of go in any direction as well. Uh, we found for, for flat 2D trellis trees, it's much easier because you can just drive straight down. But uh, there's a lot of trees still, particularly in, uh, uh, in, in crops outside of apples, so oranges and, and uh, stone fruit, where they're using a 3D, um, uh, uh, 3D trees without heavy, heavy pruning. Uh, so you need to be able to almost drive around or drive closer and further away from the tree as you go through it to at least get most of the most of the fruit. Um, the way we're trying to to do this, as I said, is very upgradable. So it's it's assembled on we assemble the machines on the orchard, and you can change which which pieces you you put into the machine depending on what the requirements of the orchard are. Uh, and it's all maintained out of uh, out of facilities like this on the on the orchards. I'm, I'm on one of the uh, the orchards now. Um, so we're working with uh, three growers for that, two in Victoria, one in uh, New South Wales. Uh, none in Tasmania yet, but we'll, we'll be uh, dropping down there soon. Uh, if you can jump to the next slide there as well. Um, these guys have basically been, been great. They've been uh, happy to, for us to come and attempt to pick some of their fruit uh, and have even agreed to, uh, to, to pay us for any bins that we actually managed to, to harvest, which has been fantastic. Um, basically, the response from, from industry has been very... Um, like very, very enthusiastic and uh, helpfully uh, skeptical that the technology will, will, will get there in the near future, uh, which is a great spot to be in because it means that the problems we get to solve are, are all uh, technical problems um, rather than uh, sort of marketing or sales problems because the growers are really, really keen uh, for uh, technology like this and other, other technology to, to work. Uh, it's, uh, 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 yeah, getting it working is the, is the hard part for, for this part. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'll uh, answer questions for that later on. But um, that's what we're working on, and hopefully in the next, uh, we'll have a machine kind of working in the next uh, in the next year or so, being able to pick fruit uh, and actually be working commercially and picking commercial scales of of fruit. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, Hunter, uh, and thanks guys for starting to put some questions in the Q and A. Uh, next up, we have Fee from Bitwise Agronomy. Hi. Um, so, yeah, so Bitwise Agronomy, we are cutting the cost of um, production for wine, citrus and berries at the moment, and we use artificial intelligence um, to do this. Uh, next slide, please. So basically what we found was, um, you know, there's a massive problem with farms at the moment with having visibility on crops. And the scale of horticulture and um, being able to farm at that level and with dis, uh, distributed and complex sites makes it really hard to have eyes on all your plants. Um, and it brings inefficiencies of, um, you know, cost, disease, uh, work 
labour um, sort of allocation of the jobs that they're doing around, um, around the farm as well. And then that can create sort of loss um, and yield and quality and also human error when sort of predicting logistics and things like that. Um, so we knew this problem because I had it myself. I've got a vineyard here in Tasmania. I was travelling all the time because um, I was working in Industry 4 and, um, you know, going off the island all the time and my crop was getting out of control. So I set about sort of solving this problem because there was nothing in the market at this stage. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so basically what we do, and sorry, I don't think my video is going to work, but um, our customers, um, what they do is they get a GoPro camera, they attach it to their existing farm machinery, like this quad bike here, and um, just capture the data themselves. They upload it into our Greenview platform where we process the data and then we give that back within 48 hours to give actionable insight um, to the growers. Uh, next slide, please. So um, this video uh, was a video of the actual raspberry project that we did for the test lab. So it shows um, sort of the identification of the berries um, and the different stages as we walked down the rows with the GoPro um, so that we could then start to look at, you know, where we are in the cycle that these particular plants were at. Uh, next slide. Um, and it was just a couple of other examples here um, that we had to show. So the one that you can see with the computer vision on there is of a glass house. Um, it's called uh, Dyson Farming in the UK. I've got a six hectare glass house where they've optimised to grow strawberries, but to be able to, for them to forecast the yield was something that was missing for them. So we really try to work on um, crops that are high value and have a lot of um, uh, maintenance costs. So for our berry producers, being able to correctly do the weekly forecasting and the short term forecasting was a massive gap for them and a massive issue to get that correct. And it was costing them a lot of money as well um, because the, the market wasn't ready for the berries. Um, the other video I was going to show here was off um, our wine grapes. So during pruning, um, some of our customers like Pernod Ricard, uh, they spend up to $2 million, like in New Zealand, $2 million to just to prune. But there's no sort of quality control on that pruning, but it's like the number one thing that can affect um, your yield at, 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 the end of the, um, at the end of the year and when harvest happens. So by us being able to give them information about how many canes they've got on the wires there and how many nodes per cane across their whole crop, um, they really start to get the information where they can change the way that they pay their contractors on a per cane basis um, and, and for quality of work. Uh, next slide. So um, some of our customers uh, here, these are um, just some of our ones that we've been working with over the last summer, um, the likes of Pernod Ricard and Costa and Perfection with Berries, um, Marlborough Grape Growers and Accolade Wines and Farmlands. I'll go on to the next slide. Um, so we started our journey in 2019, it was sort of the winter of 2019. I, I had some data that I collected that summer um, before when we just built our first um, computer vision video um, and uploaded it onto the net. Um, that summer, we went onto the Farmers to Founders program to help us take our proof of concept into an actual product. And we had um, a number of growers across Australia and New Zealand and vineyards, table grapes and berries um, that we went into this proof of concept with. Um, off the back of that proof of concept, um, this summer, we had 25 customers um, doing paid and underpaid trials, and um, that was with 35 different farm locations around the world. And then six months, sort of less than six months on from that, we've now got 35, uh, 36 clients globally um, with 61 different farms. And we're just uh, getting ready for our, our European growing season um, and you know, UK, European and US growing season where we're doing um, berry trials, uh, table grapes, uh, wine grapes and, and citrus. Um, and that's everything from me. Awesome. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks for sharing so much of that journey uh, and some great visuals there. Uh, our final startup for uh, this event will be Nancy from Rapid Aim. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for the opportunity to tell you a bit more about Rapid Aim. So we um, deliver pest forecast news and alerts. 
about two and a half years ago, my co-founders and I from CSRO exited and um, launched a company, raised a seed round and licensed our technology from CSRO. And we did this because we had a unique, we have a unique combination of skills, embedded systems engineering and biology, entomology, um, combined with our ambition and our motivation to change agriculture for the better. So at RapidAim, um, we help growers reduce the risk of loss and cost from insect pests. Uh, growers mostly use insecticide as insurance, just in case a pest is present, because they can't take the risk. Um, and that's because managing pests is a guessing game. Next slide, Sarah. So at RapidAim, what we do is we take the guesswork out of managing pests to protect crops. It's a precision pest management tool, provides a real-time data to accurately pinpoint the location of pests. It can save time and money on monitoring and management. And we do this with our novel low power sensors, edge computing and data analytics. Our first application is for fruit fly. Next slide, please. So our uh, smart sensor underpins our rapid aim platform, um, has ultra low power capacitance sensing, kind of like uh, the behavioral fingerprint of an insect. Um, if you have a fingerprint ID to unlock a phone, it's a similar type of technology but it's at a micro scale and it's to detect and discriminate insects as they enter the trap. It's a fully integrated IoT platform and it's super simple to use. Plug and play, customer self-serve, low maintenance. We get up to 18 months battery life from two small lithium ion batteries. And we've also now achieved firmware over the air upgrades. Um, it's a durable product. It's meant to be in the field for about three years. Next slide, please. Um, so the product though, that we, we don't sell our devices, that's our infrastructure. Um, we sell data packages to our end users. This is an example of our digital crop protection app for growers. They deploy the sensors across their farm and they can see exactly where the fruit flies are, when they are active, even the time of day. Um, this has really changed their spray practices. A lot of growers tell us that they used to spray at night and now they target when the pest is most active. Next slide, please, Sarah. We also provide surveillance. So surveillance is when um, a community or a government is looking for the first pest arriving. And um, we, for, for example, we've rolled out a grid of about 155 sensors across Northern Victoria, across 250 square kilometers, looking for that first fly that comes into the region in the season so that they can um, respond quickly and control the pest before it becomes a big problem. Next slide, please. So what have we done so far? Well, we launched two and a half years ago and we became commercial in January of last year. We've got more than 500 sensors deployed across Australia and New Zealand uh, for paid customers and the apps in the hand of about 170 people, customers. Um, and for the future, what we think our real impact is, is if growers can use RapidAim as digital crop insurance instead of insecticide, um, then we know that we can reduce insecticide use by about 50% because it gives growers confidence to know where and when the pest shows up. It also can increase crop protection efficiencies by about 30%. You're no longer sending people out to look at um, traps and also you're not spraying just in case. But I think a really interesting one, particularly for Tasmania is that we've demonstrated that we can reduce the cost of biosecurity surveillance by 35%. And if there's an outbreak, because of the real time information that it delivers, we can also reduce the costs of an outbreak response. So that's us, we're excited to grow and thank you for the opportunity today to tell you more about RapidAIM. Fantastic, thanks so much, Nancy. Uh, and thank you to Hunter and Fee as well. Hopefully that's just a, a small taste of all of the exciting or some of the exciting startups um, that are popping up and commercializing and having a massive impact across Australia. Three really different origin stories, if you picked up on that, one from the research world, one from the farmer grower side of things, and uh, one from the tech side of things with robotics and mechatronics. So no one true pathway to a startup, but all different kinds of ways to build a company and have an impact. Uh, there's a couple questions here, but given time is short, um, I think we probably only will take on about one of them. Um, these look like a few coming through from the audience. Um, 
maybe just a quick uh, question for all three of you to touch on. Um, what's been one key enabler of and one key barrier to your success as a company thus far as we think about ecosystems and the test lab? Uh, we'll just do a quick whip around uh, and then we'll leave it there for today. Um, we'll go in reverse order. Maybe Nancy, if you want to start. Yeah. Um, well, definitely having access to capital and partners to bring business smarts to the company has been essential. Um, I guess, Sarah, I can say that uh, Tenacious, we're partners with Tenacious and it's been absolutely fantastic. So you need capital and the smarts to um, give yourself the space to develop your technology and also know how to go to market. So that's been fantastic. I think probably one of the barriers is that um, it wasn't easy exiting uh, technology out of CSIRO, but I think Sara is getting better at it and uh, we learned a lot from it as well. But it was it was tricky, but we love the success story that we have around that. Thanks, Sarah. Fantastic. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Fee. Um, for us, uh, the real enablers were the willingness of industry to work with us. I think it really helped that I was a farmer too and could understand their problems and having um, all of our growers jump on board at such an early stage because they saw value in the technology has just helped us develop it so quickly. Um, we've had so much strawberry data. I think we've got the largest strawberry data set in the world at the moment, which is crazy. So that's, you know, thanks for the help of all of our growers. Um, something that wasn't so easy was, I suppose, um, I think in Tasmania, we've got a long way to go with our entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, we're a little bit behind uh, the rest of Australia and that makes it difficult, especially during COVID when we couldn't travel and we were trying to fundraise and um, sort of doing that online and, and stuff was... Um, pretty hard going, but I feel like there's a swell of momentum at the moment behind the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, there's talk about, you know, people trying to get a chief entrepreneur up and running down here and things like that. And I think we really need to get behind that. So it's easier for, for startups like me to um, have success down here in Tasmania. Fantastic. Thanks, Fee. Uh, and Hunter. Uh, yeah, um, in our case, I guess the biggest uh, enabler has been uh, the probably the growers we've been uh, working with for it. Like we tell people about what we're what we're doing, and they're like very and come up with solutions for for for, for trouble that we're what, that we're having. Like having an issue of um, you know we have to keep transporting the machine from our little like tent we're in in, in Sydney, and one of the growers said, "Why don't you come use the the the, pool, the packing shed that's empty at the moment?" And, like yeah great that's fantastic and now we're on site and it's much faster and, and and quicker and similar things are like hey we're having this issue with getting the fruit off the tree or that causing damage why don't you try this or do that like the girls have been really uh really great and, and helpful um uh, yeah no uh, that is yeah been good uh, then tricky tricky side is the uh, seasonality of the of the harvesting like if something doesn't work at the start of the season we have to go solve that problem then we might have missed that that variety so we've got to wait a year before we can test that particular solution on that variety again um we did different fruit to kind of spread that about but some of the specific stuff that you have to actually wait like a whole year to to, to test things um so that's been tricky Awesome. Thanks, Hunter. So hopefully a bit of a taste of what these startups are going through from research commercialization to engaging with an ecosystem to capital raising to the nitty gritty of seasonality and being on farm and getting out in the regional areas, which of course is so critical in ag tech. Um, but a big lesson there to be engaging early and often with growers, which is something, of course, the test lab is planning uh, to support throughout the project. So with that, we'll leave it there for the showcase and I'll turn it over to Coots to close out the afternoon. Oh, thank you very much, Sarah, for hosting a wonderful showcase. And, and thank you, Hunter, Fiona, and Nancy, to walk us through. I mean, it's great um, listening to the actual industry and seeing how uh, they're incorporating these technologies, because uh, that's what we want to do. We want to seek to continue to work with our industry partners to incorporate uh, 4.0 into their businesses. Um, in closing, I'd like to thank um, all the presenters today, um, Alex, uh, Jeff, uh, Stephen, Fiona, and Rufus. Um, I'd also like to thank all the participants. Um, if you had a quick look over to the participant number, we cracked over 100. That's fantastic. It's fantastic to get that um, interest out there. Um, and lastly, I want to thank uh, the team who've put all this together, um, Sandra in particular and Belinda for organising the event. Um, I think uh, we're getting close to lunch. I know I'm, uh, after seeing some of those berries, really interested in having a nice lunch. So thank you all for your attendance today. Have a good day. Industry 4.0 is 
in my view, certainly the fourth industrial revolution. Like Henry Ford said, if you ask people what do they want next, they want a faster horse. <laughs> but he, you know, he came along with the innovation of the car. Someone has to go first. To be brave and bold and courageous enough to take that step, because what you will learn from doing this will suddenly be many, many aha moments. With Industry 4.0 and the whole opportunity for connectivity, for security, for cyber physical systems, for the industrial internet of things, and we now have tools such as machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyse very large volumes of information that we as humans haven't been able to do or couldn't do. And so it's accelerating the opportunity for us to understand those cause and effect relationships through that area of integration. The great thing about Test Lab is that it's really open to the problem that you bring to it. So it's a set of technology and a set of equipment that you can use, but more than that, it's access to a set of people. So I think often we have some people who have problems they need solved. We have some people with great know-how and technology, but they're not aware what the problems are. So Test Lab is a mechanism to connect those two together and get real world outcomes, which to me is what innovation really is when it actually has a commercial benefit to our businesses here in Tassie. Our university is really committed to making a difference for Tasmania. I guess our overall strategy is to make sure that Tasmania is more prosperous, equitable and sustainable. From a Tasmanian perspective, we think the test lab actually amplifies one of our areas of advantage where we have distinctiveness. And so we want to try and extract most of that uh, distinctiveness and value on island. We have a particular advantage and we can provide a contribution to the nation and we think, in fact, the world. The University of Tasmania is one of the six universities that has had really the privilege of being able to host one of these test labs. The equipment that we have within this test lab is cutting edge. In some cases, there's no other equipment in the Southern Hemisphere that people are using. It's really about what value does the company want when they're wanting to take that step and get into that industry four lake and what that does for that business it gives them through this huge decision support system the transparency over what's happening they'll be able to see where the where the breakpoints are they'll be able to see where the productivity is lower and question that but then as they amass the data from one season to the next to the next then we're getting into the real magic which is the predictability from the University of Tasmania perspective, our role is to provide the expertise, is to host this equipment and to engage in a very deep and meaningful way with our, with our industry partners to help them on this journey. And it is a journey of Industry 4.